Ninja. Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter World Iceborne news update. So, on the YouTube channel Capcom channel, they hosted their Capcom TV episode. I suppose it was a live stream. It was two hours and 46 minutes long. And basically what we got was more information about some of the balance changes coming to Iceborne. And what I wanted to do was go over that with you now. As you know, there was uh, kind of some information that I released earlier in a different video. If you haven't seen that, you can uh, I'll leave a link to it in the comment section. How about that? Uh, and and uh, some of what they talked about today confirms what we learned. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm going to start with this graphic. You can see it, it talks about elemental and non-elemental damage adjustments. The maximum attack power boost from elemental attack skills has been increased. So I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about like fire attack, water attack, thunder attack, ice attack. Uh, what am I missing? Dragon attack, right? I'm assuming they're talking about that. And this is something everyone was kind of already calling for, right? Uh, some of the problems with building for elemental damage is that very often you weren't allowed to bring the fire attack or whatever up to level uh, five anyways because it would cap out so there's an elemental cap and that's really important to talk about underneath it it says non-elemental boost skill effects slightly decreased from 10 percent to five percent now i don't know what they think counts as slightly but jumping uh, literally in half is not a small decrease this is a pretty heavy nerf to the elementless decoration and I wouldn't be really too worried about it because everything does come down to not just the, the skills, but actually what we get in the base stats of the weapons. So what I'm saying is you could still have a dominant raw weapon that's better than all the elemental weapons in that weapon class, right? Let, let's say great swords. Uh, you could have a, a, a raw damage great sword that still beats out every other great sword if they just release a high raw damage greatsword. So it could still be an issue, just depends, right? We wanna see the base stats of a greatsword where maybe it has like, I don't know, like 2000 fire damage. That would be an elemental greatsword and then you could play with elemental greatswords, but it just depends on if they do that. So we're gonna to have to see. What I would like to see is definitely more variety in builds. And this means they are going to have to release greatswords where the raw damage greatsword isn't the best option for every single fight, right? They have to do that. They have to make that change or else we're all going to be stuck with, once again, one greatsword like the Wyvern Ignition Impact Greatsword. We're going to be stuck with that. You're going to use it for 100% of your fights. So I really am looking forward to this balancing. All right, and the last line reads, Elemental attack skills go now to level 6 uh, with a new skill added that grants the free element status and increases elemental attack damage when continually attacking, etc. <laughs> What's the etc. for? Um, that's a really strange one. So uh, bringing elemental attacks up to level six is appropriate. This is what you would expect from Iceborne expansion master rank. What I don't understand is this other part. So if you attack continually, you'll get the free element status. I don't really understand though. Um, so it says new skill. Maybe this is just is, is unrelated to like fire attack, ice attack, water attack, thunder attack. It's this unrelated skill all on its own and you can put it on your build. And if you attack continually, it's going to unlock your elemental status. It, it already doesn't sound very appealing because what you're telling me is my first attacks aren't going to have any of the benefits, any of the benefits of being... Um, uh, free elemented already, right? So it's going to have hidden elemental damage. And what that means is that I should either be using the non-elemental boost with that weapon, or I should be building for, for let's say fire attack. Let's just assume there's a fire weapon to make for, I can talk about it easier. So let's say it's a fire weapon and I'm continually attacking with it. That means I'm I'm building fire, uh, fire attack or whatever it is, fire boost, right? And that also means that if I'm not continually attacking, I'm not getting the benefits of fire attack. So I don't know how to feel about that one. I suppose it all depends on how easily it unlocked all of your elemental damage. If it unlocks very quickly, then it's going to be a very interesting skill. Otherwise, I feel like I would just use free element or even better non-elemental boost. We'll have to see. It all comes down to how, how it actually feels like what it looks like when we actually get into the weapons, when we actually get into the skills. In the next graphic, it looks like they're showing changes to the sword and shield and the dual blades. You can see we've got a sword and shield for fire element, a sword and shield for ice element, and a dual blades for water element, right? The Corona, Legia, Rhymespire, Holy Sabers, and there's two uh, columns, 
one for World and one for Iceborne, and I think they kind of show you how things have changed. Like maybe the elemental caps have been upped. They've, uh, they've been increased essentially. Uh, and it looks like in Iceborne, you're gonna be able to bring, let's look at the Corona. You're gonna be, be able to bring the Corona all the way up to fire element uh, of 320, all the way up to level six. And it looks like um, it is similar for the other ones as well. 500 for Legia Rhymespire, 240 for the Holy Sabers. So this is really interesting. It looks like they're showing not only will you get level six, but in general, they're actually just straight up buffing that elemental damage, right? Because look, level five, level four, level three, uh, it shows what it would have been, I think, and it's showing what it will be now. 280, 290, 300. I'm looking at the Corona again. 280, 290, 300, right? So it looks like they've gone back and they've just buffed elemental damage in general, okay? So this is really cool, and I'm really excited to see what this feels like. You know, there's going to be people who are going to be playing the base game anyways in order to get into Iceborne, so this will affect them a little bit, uh, and people who don't buy the expansion also, this will affect them. This is just a straight buff to elemental damage. So this looks great. I, you know, it was needed. Everyone kind of knew it, and this will shake up the damage meta a little bit, right? So that's good. In the next graphic, they talk about weakness exploit, and this is something we kind of already knew about, but it definitely confirms it. So everyone knows weakness exploit as arguably the best skill in the game, and it's been nerfed, right? So level one, uh, it's no longer gonna be 15% affinity on weak spots, now it's gonna be 10% affinity with 5% on wounded parts. So this actually answers a question I had anyways. I, you know, when I was playing the demo, I was like, isn't weakness exploit going to be broken when it gets paired with the wounded parts? The answer is no. It's going to need. It's going to receive a kind of needed nerf, but really, it's not that nerfed, right? Like if you cause the wounded parts, it just goes up to its uh, old damage. So if you look carefully, it's 10 and 5, 15 and 15, and 30 and 20, which means 15 percent, 30 percent, and 50 percent. So you know, <laughs> it's, it's basically what it always was, but you're going to have to be using the Clutch Claw now. So expect people to still take Weakness ex Exploit and really expect people to start using the Clutch Claw in the fight because I think that's basically what this graphic is telling me is going to happen. Otherwise, uh, I don't know what will happen otherwise. Um, you know, not all the weapons get wounded parts easily on their Clutch Claw. I think with the light weapons, you have to do it twice. Is that, isn't that correct? So... Is interesting. It makes me wonder if Weakness Exploit just won't pair with those weapons quite as well. They get, you know, they get Slinger Pods when they use Clutch Claw, and I've, I've heard that if they do it twice in a row on the same part, then you get a wounded part. Well, this is really going to affect weapons like the Dual Blades and the Bow, and both of those weapons pretty heavily rely on Weakness Exploit, right? Like, if you're using, I don't know, a Bow Gun, uh, you can use Max Might all day, but if you're using the Bow, you definitely can't use Max Might because all of your attacks use stamina. See what I'm saying? So this is really interesting. We're just going to have to see how it plays out when the game comes out, or when the expansion comes out, I should say. Uh, but it's, it's not that bad, especially if you play in a group, I noticed. Monster parts tend to get wounded really easily. So in a group, weakness exploit's gonna do fine. The next graphic is a little harder to understand exactly what's going on here, but I think I know what's going on. So we're going to talk a little bit about monster his own values. Each body part of the monster has different his own values. They kind of show this in the the hunter's uh, notes where it has like two star, three star, right? It's really not a very good system though. Uh, what's going on is internally there are actual like very defined, well-defined numbers that tell you what the his own values of a monster are. Of course, you can see these, you can look these up and, because people have data mined the game, right? And with the weakness exploit, you need that his own value to be 45. So it's looking a little bit like this graphic is telling you on monster parts that are over the his own value of 45, of course, weakness exploit isn't gonna work on that body part, but if you use clutch claw, Perhaps you reach, if you look at the yellow bar, it says weak point threshold. Perhaps you're reaching that point where you brought the hit zone value down low enough for weakness exploit to work again. And, and so that's what I think I'm reading here. And then they're also like, by the way, it'll count as a wounded body part. So weakness exploit is going to activate and you're going to get 20%. Really, this just makes it seem like clutch claw is going to be super important for the weakness exploit skill. And the weakness exploit skill is still going to be one of the strongest skills. That's kind of what I'm interpreting from this. Finally, we move on to Max Might. Poor Max Might. So in the previous video, we had learned that Maximum Might was receiving some kind of nerf 
where your stamina bar actually has to be full for a little while before it activates. Uh, today on Capcom TV, we'll learn a little more about it, some uh, finer details that really are, are quite important. Let's go over them. So you'll notice uh, at level one, it says keep stamina full for a full five seconds to activate. What this really tells me is that it's no longer going to be a skill for hammers. It's no longer going to be a skill really for any weapon that uses any kind of stamina. The bow guns will be the ones that mostly use maximum might. Now, what's interesting about this graphic is you get all the way down to level five and something something really interesting happens. It says it increases affinity by 40%, which means if you throw in that fifth level of max might, you're not getting any more affinity. You can see it goes from 40 to 40. However, it changes the nature of maximum might to be the way that it used to be. This is so interesting. So basically, you have to invest five levels into maximum might to get 40% affinity, and it works like it used to work. So your affinity bar fills up. You can use your uh, brutal big bang on your hammer, and you'll get the benefits of 40% affinity. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, it requires a deeper investment to be the way it used to be. If you want level four max might, this is still going to work for bow guns. Level five maximum mites going to be for any weapon, but only if you can afford level five max might. And Essentially what this means is what armor they release to us in the end game, you know, there's going to be an end game. What armor sets they release are really going to matter. Because if they release an armor set that gives you like four levels of max might, we got good old max might in the game again, right? If they don't, then max might's kind of going to drop off the map again. You're, you're just going to see it mostly on like a few weapons, maybe longsword, maybe, um, maybe longsword, maybe greatsword. Definitely the bowguns. That's probably what you're going to mostly see it used on. All right, so those are the changes to Maxima Might. In the next graphic, they tease Gunlands adjustments. You know what that means. We want Gunlands buffs. So they start out with Wormstake Blast detonation damage is slightly increased. That's good because one of the problems with the Wormstake Blast is that the whole attack animation takes so long, the recovery frames are so long. You might as well have just been wide shelling and poking and your damage output would have been essentially the same. So increasing the detonation damage is a very important. They say slightly increased. We don't actually know what that means. Remember when they were talking about the elementless skill, they said slightly decreased and they literally cut the, uh, <laughs> they cut it in half from 10% to 5%. So slightly increased could mean doubling the damage. But again, we don't actually know. Then it says Wormstake Blast loads faster. Uh, you know, that's nice. I didn't really feel like that was such a big deal. I felt like what was really important was the attack speed of the worm stake. So the problem with it is your character has to go through an attack animation that takes so long, the monster has either already interrupted you or moved out of the way by the time the worm stake actually comes out and sticks to the monster. At least now people will have more of a reason to use the worm stake because of the uh, damage increase. It's hard to say. Hopefully what they mean when they say slightly increased, they mean the damage has been doubled. All right, and after that is a really interesting thing. They say that guard point has been added to Wormstake Blast's loading animation. Huh? What does that mean? <laughs> it sounds like a good idea because after you've used your Wormstake, you do need a moment to reload the Wormstake again. And now saying you can reload it more aggressively by letting the monster attack you and using your guard point. I don't really know how good I think this is. It says if you have the guard skill, you can use Wormstake Blast after a guard. So this is very similar to what's going on with the charge blade. It looks like they've taken that idea and they've applied it to the Gunlands. They say, throw in a level of guard, use guard point while reloading the Wormstake Blast, and then send out another Wormstake Blast. That sounds very cool and is probably more of an important change than the first two changes. Unless when it says, once again, Wormstake Blast has been slightly increased, what they mean is that damage has been doubled. If that's the case, and now we have guard point and, and you can put on the guard skill and you use Wormstake Blast right away again, uh, that's pretty cool. So we'll have to see about that. Also, I wanna point out, Often when Capcom is talking about these changes they've made, sometimes they do smaller changes that they don't really talk about and the attack speed could have been changed for Wormstake Blast. So we do have to test it as well, all right? So next it says, if Wormstake Blast does not hit the mark, the equipped slinger ammo will drop to the ground. That is a very good improvement. Also it says, 
Wide Sweep will no longer knock down players. So this is a buff to kind of like a slapstick playstyle with the gun lance uh, that, that won't punish your, your teammates quite as much anymore. Uh, why don't they do that with a lot of the weapons? It seems like, yeah, I don't know. The, the way it works is so bizarre. You don't get punished. I mean, you do in a way, like when your teammates do less damage, that's punishment for you. But in terms of play style, uh, in, in terms of enjoying the game, you don't get punished. So when you're using longsword and you're smacking everyone all over the place and they have to build brace jewel, not you, it's like they get punished and you don't. That's how it actually feels. Uh, even though you're affected by their damage output being lowered by having to bring that brace jewel. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's just some side commentary, some side rant about how friendly fire works in the game. I don't necessarily like friendly fire in Monster Hunter World. But yeah, so wide sweep no longer knocks down players. That's great. The next graphic looks kind of like a big deal. So it says combos possible after loading the worm stake blast. You'll notice the bottom three combos, lateral thrust, lunging up, up thrust, shelling, those are all kind of what you're already used to. But the top one, worm stake blast, are they saying you can load the worm stake and then just immediately worm stake? Because if that's what they're saying, that's actually huge, right? Currently, what you have to do to get the worm stake blast out, you already have to be at the end of a combo in order to get the worm stake blast out. And this is all part of the frustration of trying to use worm stake. So normally what I would do is shell shell worm stake. That's the combo I would use, but you can also use a slap, uh, a melee combo where, you know, you're doing the wide, uh, they were just talking about the wide slash, right? And this can turn into a worm stake combo as well. The problem is you have to go through like at least two moves before you get the worm stake blast available. If they're saying you can reload worm stake and then just immediately worm stake, that's a huge buff to the move, right? That alone makes it considerably more viable, assuming I'm understanding that right, but it looks like that's what they're saying. They're saying, go ahead and load it, go ahead and use it. So that's great. And it makes sense because they were saying you can guard point with the worm stake blast and then immediately worm stake blast. And that, that makes a lot of sense. They're saying you can just load and then just worm stake. So that's great. That's a huge adjustment to worm stake. And that's all the graphics we got concerning balance changes in Iceborne. Let's do a quick review. Elemental skills buffed. Raw uh, skill nerfed, elementless nerfed quite hard actually. Uh, weakness exploit has been nerfed technically unless everyone uses Clutch Claw, in which case it pretty much works the way it used to work. Uh, maximum Might now requires level five if you want it to work the way it used to work, but it only goes up to 40% affinity. Uh, some weapons won't need to take it to level five. Probably the bow guns won't need to take it to level five. We also learned that uh, the Maximum Might works a little bit uh, while afterwards after it activates up to level four, and then it just changes and level five is so weird now. And then a bunch of gun lance changes, a guard point on the gun lance, slight buff to the damage output, slightly faster reload speed, a guard point and then immediately worm blast, which might mean that we can now just worm blast when we want to worm blast, or maybe it's more like a combo that works with the reload for the worm blast. So that's probably what's, what it's going to be. It's probably going to be a combo with the reload for the worm blast. Uh, yeah, just a whole bunch of nice changes. The slinger pod drops out of the gun lance if you miss the worm blast. So all kinds of improvements to the gun lance. We'll have to see how it works. All right. Uh, the video stretched on much longer than I thought I would be. <laughs> I'm going to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.